Hello friends, I am uh, Karthik, Assistant Professor, Biomedical Engineering Department, Mahindra Institute of Technology. Uh, today we are going to discuss about an introduction to biosignals. So now to start with, you will see what is meant by biosignals. Biosignals are uh, electrical signals in living beings. So the uh, living being which we are concerned about is the human beings that can be continually measured and monitored. So the generation of biosignals is due to the electrical activity that is taking place in a cell. So if you if we take a cell, when the cell is excited, it means when the cell is getting any current from the other cell, what happens is potential is developed in the cell. So the potential in a cell is called as the action potential. So due to the action potential, there is physiological signals or bio, biological or bio signals that are present in our body. Next we will see the examples of bio signals. Examples of bio signals that you might be already aware of are ECG which is electrocardiogram, EEG electroencephalogram, EMG electromyogram and EOG electroarculography. So there are other bio signals also apart from this but for uh, today's discussion we are going to consider only these uh, bio signals. So to start with ECG, so ECG is electrocardiogram, it is uh, recording and monitoring of uh, electrical activity of the heart. So the typical ECG signal looks like this, uh, in a ECG signal there is a P wave, QRS wave and T wave. So each wave in this signal represents a particular heart function. P wave represents the atrial depolarization. We know that in heart there are four chambers, upper atrium chambers and lower two ventricle chambers. So here P wave represents the atrial depolarization, it means the contraction of atrium. So atrium has to contract in order to uh, make the blood flow from atrium to the ventricles. So P wave represents the atrial depolarization and the QRS wave represents the uh, contraction of ventricles. So it is also called as ventricular depolarization and the T wave represents the relaxation of ventricles. That is ventricular depolarization. So here what is happening is atrium and ventricles they contract for the blood to flow from one chamber to the other chamber. So to know some parameters about ECG, a typical or normal ECG signal will have the amplitude between 1 and 5 millivolts. So milli is 10 to the power minus 3. So the voltage of ECG signal is very low. So when we want to process the ECG signal, we have to amplify it. The ECG signal using some amplifier, only then we can process it. And then bandwidth of ECG signal is in the range of 0.05 to 100 Hz and uh, there are some noises also found in the ECG signals. So one important noise uh, in ECG signal is due to the motion in artifact. So motion artifact means when the patient is moving during the recording of ECG signal, then due to that movement there is some disturbance seen in the ECG signal. So that uh, noise is called as motion artifact noise. And there is uh, another noise called 50 or 60 hertz power line interference. So this is due to the interference of 50 or 60 hertz signal from other electrical systems like uh, light or fan. There are a lot of electrical systems around ECG machines. So due to the electrical interference from those uh, electrical components, so this 50 or 60 hertz power line interference is seen in the ECG signal. Then what are the applications of ECG? So from ECG, we can know that whether the patient is suffering from ischemia or not. So ischemia is reduced uh, blood flow from the heart. And also we can know uh, from ECG signal that the patient is suffering from arrhythmia or not. So arrhythmia is uh, abnormal heart rate. So from ECG, we can also find out the heart rate. So uh, the time interval between one QRS complex and another QRS complex will give us the heart rate value. So from that value we can know whether the heart rate is abnormal or not. Normally the normal heart rate is considered to be 72 beats per minute. So if uh, the person or the patient is having a low heart rate or high heart rate that is called as the arrhythmia 
and also if there is some problem in the uh, uh, conducting nodes. So there are two conducting nodes as you all know in heart. One is sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular node. If the heart is not getting the proper pulses from these nodes, then that will reflect in the ECG signal. So from ECG signal, we can also know that whether the patient is having some conduction defects or not. Next, we will see how the ECG is recorded in a, in a hospital setup. So, maybe you may be aware of how ECG is recorded. Uh, as you can see from this diagram, the electrodes are connected with the patient and this is the ECG machine and uh, you can get the ECG uh, in a printed out form, in a graphical uh, form, the hard copy of ECG signal you can get it from this uh, print out and uh, if you see how many electrodes are placed for collecting the ECG, so traditionally 12 electrodes are placed out of which 6 electrodes are placed on the chest as shown in this figure and another three electrodes are called as limb electrodes. They are placed one in uh, right hand, another in right hand and one in the, the left leg as the reference point. Now uh, here this forms the triangle. This is called as the nth over triangle. So if we connect each edge of the triangle to the center of the sides of the triangle, it, we can form another three electrodes. You can see this edge is connected to the center of this side. So this edge is connected to the center of this side and this one is connected to the center of this side. So we can here we are getting 1, 2, 3, 3 electrodes are formed here and here there are 3 electrodes. So total 6 and another 6 electrodes are placed on the chest. So total 12 electrodes are used to collect the uh, ECG. Uh, then, then we will see about electro program. It is also called as EEG. So it is uh, the, measure, the measurement of brain's active electrical activity from the scalp. So uh, the measured signal results from the activity of billions of neurons. So electrical activity of billions of neurons, uh, we can get it in the form of a ECG. And uh, its amplitude, its amplitude is between 0.001 to 0.01 millivolt. Its bandwidth is between 0.5 to 40 hertz. And here also in EEG, we will be having some error or noise. So here errors, you can get it in the form of a thermal or of noise. That is due to the heating, due to the heating of the electrodes or due to the heating of the any system in the EEG, we can get thermal or of noise. Or uh, again as we saw in the ECG signal, so in ECG signal we saw that uh, uh, there is a electrical interference noise. noise. Here also there is electrical interference noise of 50 to 60 hertz. And also there is a blink artifact. Suppose while recording the ECG, if the patient is blinking his or her eyes, then also there will be disturbance in the EEG. So what are the applications of EEG? So EEG we can uh, use to study the sleep studies of a patient. Suppose a patient is suffering from sleep apnea, then the, the patient's EEG can be collected uh, in a night uh, when the patient is sleeping. Then we can see how the different waves of ECG is changing. And then seizure detection. So if the patient is having uh, seizure, then also we can uh, study using the EEG signal. And also the uh, cortical mapping also can be done from the EEG signal. So now we will see, next we will see how the EEG is recorded. So EEG is recorded by placing the electrodes on the scalp. So normally on the scalp, on the head, uh, on the skin of the head, Normally 64 to 256 electrodes are placed and then the signal is collected, then it is uh, amplified and uh, noise, noises are removed, then we can get a EEG EEG signal. Uh, then another type of uh, physiological signal which we are going to discuss is electromyography or EMG. So EMG is the electrical signal uh, from the muscles. So uh, here we can see in this diagram. And then it shows two points from where EMG can be collected. So one is a tricep muscle and bicep muscle and we can also collect the EMG from other muscles also. So if you want to collect the EMG from a particular muscle then we have to use the needle electrode. Uh, normally uh, the surface electrodes are used for collecting uh, EMG. Its amplitude uh, range is from 1 to 10 millivolt and bandwidth is between uh, 20 to 2 kilohertz. The main sources of error uh, here is again as we saw in the previous physiological signals, 
error is 50 to 60 hertz uh, and the RF interference is there and what are the applications? So we can, uh, from EMG signal we can study whether particular muscle is working properly or not. So that is first is muscle function we can study and then we can study the neuromuscular diseases. So there are some neuromuscular diseases like myopathy, so that also can be studied from the EMG signal and then prosthesis. Suppose the prosthesis is implanted to the patient and we want to see whether the prosthesis is uh, uh, apt for the patient or not. That can be found out by getting the EMG signal from the patient. So this picture shows, shows how EMG is recorded. Here we can see two electrodes are placed on the bicep muscle and then uh, we can see it is recorded. So EMG is not like ECG, it means that it, uh, ECG is a periodic signal but EMG here we see it is aperiodic or it is a random signal. So it is not having a particular uh, wave. So to study EMG signal, we can uh, study the frequency of the signal and amplitude of the signal. So with respect to these parameters, we can study whether this EMG collected from the patient is normal or abnormal. Uh, next is uh, electrooculography. So it is an electric potential created when there is a movement of the eyeballs. So uh, it is uh, collected by placing the electrodes above and uh, below the eye like this. And then its amplitude is 0.01 to 0.1 millivolt. Then bandwidth is 10 hertz. So the primary sources of error here in uh, EOG is from the potential from the skin. Because we are placing the electrode on the skin, that skin also will be having some potential. So that will get interfered with the EOG signal. So that is one source of error. And another error is due to the motion. So patient uh, uh, eyes may be moving. So due to that also, uh, there may be some error in the EOG signal. And what are the applications? So from EOG, we can know the eye position of the patient and then sleep rate, sleep rate of the patient uh, using the uh, uh, how much uh, the eyeball is moving using that we can know uh, the patient uh, is sleeping yet uh, properly or not in night that we can study then uh, vestibular ocular reflex can be studied so vestibular ocular reflex is the sensory response to the eyeball movement whether the response from the brain for the eyeball movement is proper or not we can study from uh, EOG so EOG is collected like this uh, by placing the electrodes here above and below uh, the eye. So thank you very much. Uh, in the next class we will uh, discuss about other physiological uh, signals. Thank you.